To that point, let's talk to Caroline Heldman. She is uh, joining us right now. We appreciate you joining us this morning, Occidental College. And you're really uh, prolific on women's issues. And as a woman who has no doubt had to fight and scratch her way to earn her way to where you are this morning, first of all, from a very personal perspective, your thoughts on the legacy of Dianne Feinstein. Well, her legacy is that she inspired you know, a generation of women to study politics, to join politics. I think we look today at the Senate and the House and we say, OK, you know, a quarter of, uh, of the population there in membership are women. It's totally normal for us today to have women in politics, of course, still in underrepresentation since we're 51 percent of the population. But if we take a time machine and we go back, we look at Dianne Feinstein. When she entered in the year of the woman, there were only four senators that year, but we were celebrating it because in the year prior, there were only two senators. So she really was a, a pioneer and a trailblazer. I remember being a child and reading that she uh, was one of two senators from California. And I thought to myself as a little girl in Washington state, that's the state I want to live in. Yeah. There are two women representing that state. It was just unheard of at the time. And throughout her career, uh, we saw, you know, she was a moderate, but very firm um, on many of the positions that she felt passionate about. But she opened the door for a lot of girls and women. And she did something very specific, too. She extended a hand uh, and helped other women through that door. And she is a major part of why we have so many women in the Senate today. And I think this is a, a really good point because now we think about Governor Gavin Newsom will now be tasked with filling those shoes, picking someone to sit in her Senate seat. And you want to make sure that representation of women in politics continues. Well, and he has pledged that he will appoint a black woman to the Senate after losing the only black woman, Kamala Harris, to the vice presidency, which is, you know, a, a great position to be in our, our first black and Indian woman vice president. Uh, but I think Gavin Newsom uh, has a, a moment here to make history um, with with this opening in the Senate. But today, of course, really about remembering Dianne Feinstein and that what, what sticks out to me is that incredible moment, right, where her face is on camera announcing the deaths of George Moscone and Harvey Milk at the hands of, of Dan White. Uh, who had just um, left his political position. It was that moment where she was really uh, the, the conscience and the heart and the soul of the people of San Francisco and really the people of the nation in the face of this horrific shooting. And we do remember what came out of that horrific shooting. And of course, she went toe to toe with members of the NRA, said that the NRA had kind of a chokehold on Congress. And always you look at that archival footage when she goes to make a point, she folds her arms and leans in like this. And I'll never forget that moment when she leaned in when we were talking about assault weapons, going toe to toe with Senator Larry Craig out of Idaho and literally schooling him on the fact that her life had been touched by gun violence, that she had actually touched the body of one of her peers there at the at City Hall in the wake of gun violence, and that she shouldn't be schooled on this issue by somebody who hadn't been affected by it because she had been. And, you know, leaders have said, without her voice that day, we wouldn't have seen that assault weapons ban. Oh, absolutely. I can attest firsthand. I was working for a member on the House side, uh, which is very different from the Senate side. If you've ever worked in Congress, there's a bit of competition, but we always held uh, Feinstein in such high regard. And indeed, the assault weapons ban was her legacy. She got us talking about gun control long before mass shootings were an everyday event in the headlines. And it was very much inspired by what she witnessed that day. And she talked uh, on numerous occasions about essentially being little girled by men who would say, ah, you don't know about guns. And she would say, I know about gun violence. Uh, I know what I saw that day. And that passion, of course, gave us uh, 10 years of relative calm with gun violence. It was an effective ban. In fact, um, when I'm researching talking points for today about gun violence, much of what I go to is uh, Feinstein's assault weapons ban and the research and the impact of that. She really did leave us um, with some very good data about how to reduce gun violence. And it's unfortunate, you know, she wasn't uh, listened to so much in the past decade on that, but we know that her assault weapons ban laid the foundation for what is effective gun control legislation. Which is something we deal with so much and all too often in our communities every single day. Uh, Professor Carolyn Hellman, we thank you so much for your time and appreciate your insight. Thank you so much.